Hello everybody, this is Brian for Breaking Down Security. This is part two of our interview with Tanya Janka about uh, Mentor Monday, uh, which is her hashtag she uses on Twitter to connect mentors and mentees. We also discuss what it takes to be a good mentor, uh, you know, ideas that uh, you know mentors and mentees should have in mind when uh, starting a relationship some, uh, similar to this. And, you know, um, another thing we ask is, when is it time to maybe cut your mentor or mentee loose uh, in a in a in a good way or a bad way? Uh, finally, uh, we talk about the cyber, the leading cyber ladies and WOSEC International. We talk about some of the outreach, community outreach that's being done by the 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 WOSEC uh, group, and uh, uh, talk about you know what the goals of the the organization are and and you know how people can get involved with WOSEC or the leading cyber ladies. So sit back, enjoy. Uh, a lot of great discussion here. Uh, if you uh, are a, a mentor or you're looking for a mentor, uh, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't hurt to uh, check out this uh, interview with uh, Tanya. So we're going to get started by asking her about uh, leadership and mentorship. Um, so, oh, okay, so we've talked about DevOps tools. We've mentioned leadership, uh, leaders and leadership in OWASP. And uh, one of the other things you do is um, uh, mentoring. You have a hashtag on Twitter called Mentor Mondays or Mentoring mm-hmm. Mondays. Mentoring uh, Mondays. Yep. Now, Mr. Betcher has been a, a mentor when I first started working at the company that he and I worked at. Um, and then I, I would hope at some point I've become a mentor to him. Oh, Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I can't answer. He's just like not nodding or anything. He, just, like, I'm wondering where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was I was trying to ask uh, the question. And since he didn't say yes, I obviously <laughs> was not a mentor or a very poor uh, mentor. Oh. What, what does it take to be a good mentor? Oh, this is such a good question. Um. We only one, have we only have like uh, about an hour and a half, so okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the number one thing is that you have to have your mentee's best interests at heart, and that you have to be trustworthy. Um, my first professional mentor, like the best way to say it, is betrayed me. Um, like everything was awesome. And then I kind of graduated and it was cool. Everything was cool. We're friends. We hang out. We text every day. He'd offered me a job. I said, yes. And then I got offered the most prestigious job I can imagine, which is to lead the red team for Canada, where you compete in the international hacker games. You attack all the military colleges and you attack the military regularly. And I was asked to lead it and serve my country. So, of course, I said yes. Mm -hmm. And then he broke up with me as my friend uh, told me to F off and then spread rumors about me until I lost the job. Oh yeah. That's not good. Yeah. That's like really going far. Like definitely slander. Like if, if I could have someone that would go on the record. Oh yeah. And uh, so then I I was told that the job offer was rescinded and uh, yeah, I had a lot of trouble getting work for a while because of that. So if you're a mentor, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. So I got a new professional mentor who knew that guy Mm. um, and he is great. And then I got another one and she was great. And then I actually just got a brand new one and she's incredible. She's so, and um, my newest professional mentor, we agreed that we would mentor each other because we each have different superpowers. And um, so I'm helping her with her presentation skills, and then she's helping me with like like a long list of things. She's amazing. She's so, so successful. Is it a, is it a is it a formal process? Do you have to? I don't know. Is it like a Tinder? Do you swipe right? Contract. If you, yeah. Is it a contract? <laughs> what do you have to enter into think, a contract? What does it look like? Uh, I think it's really really important that you have a discussion with your mentor about what being a mentee and mentor means to each other because um, so one of the women I mentored fired me. She was super pissed at me Um, and she was expecting like so, so much more than I could ever have provided. Like she, she wanted like several hours per week. Oh wow. And, and, and I didn't understand that that was her expectation, but that's what her previous mentor had offered. So that was, that's what she thought it was. And I was like, Oh, I was kind of hoping we could have coffee once or twice a week, have phone calls 
And like, if you need me, I will be there and I will advocate for you if you need it. And I will help direct you in like, you know, your learning or, you know, if you need career advice, like I'm in your corner. And so we, we kind of broke up for years and then eventually we sort of like got back together, if that makes sense. Get the band back together. Yeah. 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 Because, well, because both of us adjusted also like in, you know, some mentors have a lot of time for you. Some don't, some people, um, will kind of treat their mentor like a free consultant. Mm. Um, I started a mentoring program for my OAS chapter and a lot of the mentors told me the mentees wouldn't call them back. They would stand them up. They mm -hmm. would just send them a message instead of using Google. Right. Like if you're going to ask your mentor a technical question, it's because you have already spent at least one hour searching for this answer on your own, at least. Right. Like if I, I think I only ever sent like two super technical questions to my last professional mentor. And I had like looked all over the place and he's like, here's what you're going to do. You're going to use this tool and do this, then use that information, use this tool, feed it in, do that. Then you're going to use this tool to double check. And then you're going to script this and you got to write that blah, blah, blah. And then you have your plan. Oh shit. That's amazing. I had no idea those things existed. He's like, go forth make it reality. Yeah. Right. And, but I, he knew that I had, so I'm like, I looked at this, I looked at this, like I've tried all these things and now I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. um, but a professional mentor should also not like uh, put you in danger. So for instance, uh, like back to the danger, um, like getting in legal trouble danger. Uh, so like wow. when I first started, I mean, I didn't know all the legalities of, of pen testing and my first professional mentor put me on a contract he should not have without the client's permission. I did not know that was not allowed. I did not realize he didn't get permission. And then he got me to pen test their prod and I found a vulnerability. He told me to exploit it. He took their prod down wow. hard. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like a, a real company. Whoops. And they had to like restore everything from backup. Like I effed mm. up their shit. And like, he told me exploit it. And like, I didn't know I'd had like zero training. Right. Right. And so I'm just like using my little developer brain and I'm just like, Oh, I'd like renamed all the files on the production server, move them all around. Like, just like, like it was a mess. It was they, like, it was, and he's, and then he was really angry at me and he was like, well, what exactly, how did you do this? I'm like, here's all the commands I did. And he's like, but like, what's the theory behind it? Like, what's the bug? I'm like, I don't know. This is black box tech, black box testing. Like <laughs> I did this, then this happened. Here's how I did it. I can reproduce it. And he's just like, maybe next time you'll do a good job. He's like, oh, wow. Oh. Wow. He was kind of like, I'm going to throw you in the middle of the ocean. I hope you don't drown. Apparently I'm the only person to ever graduate his apprentice program. 20 people before me, he fired all of them. Hmm. So I graduated. That's pretty cool. Apparently I'm the only one. Yeah. <laughs> so now is there um, an end game that you agree to? Like, okay, you can be my mentor. I'll be your mentee. But once I learn X, Y, and Z, then we can end this and I can get a better or a higher level mentor. Like I'll be equal to, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think that that's a thing, again, like conversations that you have to have ongoing. So one of my professional mentors, so he's moving and that's part of the reason why we're quote unquote breaking up, but also yeah. I've kind of extended. So I've learned the things that he has to teach. So I'm good at those things now, which is really cool. Right. And so uh, also like my career has sort of taken a different path. So I'm not a web app pen tester anymore. I do developer relations and, um, and like kind of help like shape products and I, I help build community. And then I also like, I smash things more cause I enjoy it as opposed to like the formalized act of penetration testing, right? The formalized act of, of consulting, right? Mm -hmm. I don't consult now, like almost ever. Um, it, my job doesn't really give me any time to breathe, much less like have side side hustles, as they call it, which is right. really a second job. Um, right. So so he's yeah. like, we're not really in sync anymore, mm. if that makes sense. And so 
you have to kind of do what's right for you. I mean, like he's still this awesome person who influences me and we, we actually are going to like collaborate on a little thing together now because like now I, I can be more at his level and he's like, yep. Oh, like you're doing this. I'm like, cool. Do you want to like work on it together? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> nice. and, it, and, it, and it's awesome. Um, but I feel like communication is key. I feel like having expectations is key and you can change the expectations, but you just kind of, have to have awkward conversations sometimes, right? So wouldn't it be up to the mentor really to to say, look, I really can't teach you anymore. I mean, you're like legit now, so <laughs> we can be pals, but yeah. you know, this formal thing, you should probably, and here's, here's some more mentors that'll help you um, do some other awesome things. Why don't you contact them? Definitely. I believe sometimes you have to push the little bird out of the nest. Definitely. Um, That's kind of, that's kind of corollary to my question was, should the mentee have a goal in mind when engaging the the mentor? So, um, yeah. I think it's ideal if you can have a goal. However, sometimes it's that you need to figure out what your goal is. I feel like there's a lot of people where they're like, so there's two types of people that tend to be searching for mentors that I talk to. One type is, I want to get into InfoSec. How do I do that? And so then you need someone that advocates for you, right? And then the other ones are, I want to learn X skill, or I want to get better at this. So, uh, you know, I, I do professional mentoring for a bunch of women on, like, how to do public speaking, how to be better at it, how to feel more confident at it, how to make sure you're getting like your message across, how to get a speaking gig, how to get people to show up to a speaking gig, how to like, you know, how to respond to criticism. Right. Like the number one fear of, of most of the women that I talk to who are worried about going on stage is they're worried about having a really rough question and answer period. Mm. And I have seen people be very crappy to women uh, and men um, in question period. And I used to play in a hardcore band. So you can't really get like worse um, question period than that. If that makes sense, like Mm -hmm. (laughs) audience interaction includes throwing things. Right. So uh, like I had someone get really, really, in my opinion, like wildly rude and inappropriate with me during question period in Singapore in February and I shut him down and then after he like called me out on Twitter and told me like and said that I'd made up stuff during my talk and then I sent him direct message and made him apologize I was like you are out of line sir and like in in the in the meetup I actually like was like I need you to close your mouth now because you're talking over me you're being rude you're ruining this for everyone you ask me a question that you talk over me before I can answer. Like there's nothing constructive happening here. So you are done now. And he's like, well, I'm like, no, no. Was he one and of most the- women, most women are like, that's utterly terrifying. That's so terrifying. That's like what if he got up and punched you? I'm like, well, there's like six other dudes there. So I hope you would only get to punch me once. He wasn't that big. <laughs> he's probably not going to punch me. He's a nerd. I'm a nerd. Nerds usually just like do nerd things to each other. Not really worried about violence. They punch virtually or yeah, with, right. with words. Yeah. He did punch me after he tweeted at me and was like, you can't just make up facts in your speech. And like, we all know I was right. And I was like, okay, so you and your six followers feel that way. And, uh, yep. and it was fine. Right. But yep. I think like a lot of them are really worried that they'll be like a- attacked. And so like, we talk about it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask you questions. Let's practice. I'll be a dick. You know what I mean? Or like present your talk to me. Okay. So this part wasn't clear. Like, you know what I mean? And like kind of work through fears with them. Just like my professional mentor, he actually stood on stage next to me. He sat next to me during my first talk on stage. Hmm. That was (laughs) nice. It was his conference. So he could do that. He just like sat on the side of the stage and was just like, get going. I'm right here. So, so your mentor Monday thing, uh, our mentoring Monday, uh, tag mentoring on, Monday. on Twitter. How do, how does that work? Do they tweet to you mentoring Monday? I'm looking for a mentor or I'm looking for a mentee. How do you put them together? How do you, how do you make the relationship work or start? Okay. So every Monday I tweet out, it's mentoring Monday. Do you need a professional mentor? 
Have you worked in InfoSec or another area of IT and have information that you want to share? Are you willing to take someone under your wing? If so, respond to this thread or make your own thread, but use the hashtag so people can find you. It's weird. It appears very few people understand how Twitter works. And so they will reply to mine, but they don't use the hashtag. Mm. What is happening is that a lot of people will tweet, oh, I need a professional mentor. I really want to learn how to do instant response. Or I'm really excited about malware, but obviously malware is really dangerous. Could like someone, you know, help start me off on how to make a sandbox and not F up my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then what is happening, I have discovered is that many, many members of the community are searching the hashtag and then directly contacting that person. So first, if you're going to participate in Mentoring Monday, please open your direct messages so people can respond to you. Sometimes people do that and then their DMs are closed and they're like, I don't understand. No one messaged me. Oh, crap. Right. Um, and, and make sure you use the hashtag because people are searching and I actually search for it. So a lot of people are just doing their own tweet with Mentoring Monday. And then I look for it and then I just retweet it to amplify them. And then I also am one of the many lovely ladies that control the WOSEC tweets mm -hmm. account. Um, so if it's a woman or um, a non-binary person, um, gender fluid, anything like that, then I also will retweet it from that account in hopes because there's a different audience for that account. Maybe mm. they'll be more helpful. Um, and then I sometimes try to pair people directly. Like I'll say, did you see this person's message? Or like, hey, I know you're into this topic. Is there any chance like you would just want to recommend a book to this person just to get them started off? So I've made like a lot of introductions. Um, but I happen to know, so a lot of people from work now on my team um, are secretly scooping people up. Like, hey, I saw you're into Node.js, me too, cool. Do you yeah. want to like nerd out together or like, you know, if you want, you can send me questions. Um, but mostly it's like, it's just InfoSec as a community has responded so strongly and positively in this wonderful way that I, I never would have seen coming. Like I started it because people, because I write a blog and I'm a nerd and I, I try to help. And so people are like, can you be my mentor? I'm like, I can't because I, I have five women in my life that are really important to me and I don't give them enough time. I already mm. feel like I'm kind of a shitty mentor because I don't give them all enough individual attention. And so if I take on another one, then that's just me being crappier for them. Right. And so I'm like, I can't do that, but yep. I'll try to help you find someone that can help you. That will actually be a good mentor to you. That will have time for you. Um, Cause I still, I don't, I don't know. Like I have that, I want to help everyone thing inside me. Um, but my boss keeps telling me I have to learn how to scale. So oh, this is me right. scaling. Right. Right. So this is my effort to scale. And also if I get the same question a bunch of times, I write a blog post and then share it. So like a lot of people ask me about, you know, public speaking. So I wrote one on that or um, specifically how to do like a good technical presentation. So I just published something on that. Like here are the things that I do. Like if everyone's eyes are kind of, half shut it's because they're tired right. and their brain's full and they're having trouble concentrating it does not mean you're boring it's not what it means it means they're trying so hard to listen um and yep. in my blockchain class like the last day in the afternoon i noticed like i was doing that kind of like head nod or my i was trying hard to keep my eyes closed and you know the teacher looked kind of def def deflated i was like mick you're awesome we're all so into this like you're breaking our brains with all the knowledge you're giving us. Like you're amazing. It's not you. It's us. Our brains are full. Like, can we have five? Can we have five minutes? <laughs> we will come back. Yeah. We'll empty our brains. Yep. Let's have like a little break. Um, you're amazing. Just, you know, and, he, and like you could tell by the way he responded, like he had been worried about us, like if we're paying attention. And so sometimes like just understanding that about an audience, like you feel better. Yeah. But if they're playing with their phones, like you're screwed. <laughs> well, if you, so are you a, um, are you a matchmaker? I mean, are you the e-harmony of mentoring? <laughs> oh my gosh, e-harmony. I remember that was a thing. Is that still a thing? Uh, I no, think sorry. so. <laughs> I don't, so I don't take responsibility for matching people because 
I've learned that if you try to match people, you don't always get it right, but then they feel like they have to be matched. Mm. If, if anything, yeah. if you go have a coffee and you don't click, don't do it. Keep looking just like dating, I guess. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, like if you meet someone and you don't click, like you're not going to marry them. Right. And mentoring is a person that you need to trust. Um, I also think like a lot of people need to do, I guess something people have been telling me is called advocating. Um, so I have a much longer list of humans who I advocate for. So if, uh, for instance, I was asked to speak at a conference uh, in Israel that's in a few weeks from now. However, I was in Israel last week and I, I just, I can't just fly right back there. Uh, I theoretically have other things to do than that, even though it's an awesome opportunity. So I, I wrote them and I told them like, you know who would be perfect for that? This person. She's awesome. Let me tell you why. And then I just told them a bunch of things that they're totally unaware of. And then they're like, damn, can we have her number? I'm like, yeah. And so then I made a little introduction and then now she's going to get that spot instead, nice. which is, which is great. Right. And she's a lesser known speaker, even though she's incredible. Um, so I've been like doing a lot of that or um, when I was in Israel, I brought one of my mentees and then she stayed in my hotel room with me and she did my talk with me. And um, she also, like, we fundraised for her plane ticket. So then she could come on the trip for free. So because she was speaking, she got in free. We, you know, shared my space. And then all of this came together. So then she got to have this opportunity because I was willing to share. And I think that a lot of people in InfoSec don't realize how much they have that they could share. Mm -hmm. So like right. if you are so if you're invited to be on a panel or you're invited to do some sort of talk or be on a podcast, right? What you can do is say they, like if you can't make it, like you could offer that spot to someone else that you know you know is good. So I'm not saying we should advocate for people that have no skills or experience or that aren't qualified. Those are people that need mentors and need to work up to that. Right. Like a lot of conferences will say, oh, there's no female speakers. I'm like, okay, I have a list of 10 for you. Like, which topics do you want? I'll send you at least three. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. like, maybe they didn't apply. But like, if you're telling me there's none and you really need one and I, I you invited me, I can't come. Like, I'm going to try to help. Right. So yeah. um, are, when you're when you're talking about advocating, is it also for like helping to find people jobs? Because I've been yes. I've been burned by this in the past where I'm like, oh, yeah, this guy's great for a job. I only know him through, say, Twitter or I have yeah. saw him at a conference for 15 minutes. Now, I, I won't lie. I actually met somebody at a conference for 15 minutes last year at B-Side Springfield. Seemed very smart. I sent him to my carpool buddy, Dr. Crispin Cowan, and um, uh, he was talking to Crispin, and Crispin was like, yeah, we should bring him in. And he's doing a phenomenal job, just killing it. And, you know, that's one of those things. But I've also had somebody that I used to play RPGs with and he, you know, got laid off from his job in IT at the hotel. And I was like, Oh, well he needs a job. My boss. Oh yeah. He'll do his job. Six months later, he's fired because he can't do his job. And I, you know, yeah. you, you take a reputation hit if you make that mistake. Of course, this has been almost 10 years ago. Um, and, but it, it's hard if you, if your reputation is on the line and mm -hmm. you don't really know those people. Yeah, I only um, will give someone one of my speaking spots if I've seen them speak and I know they're good. Okay. I also, I might make an introduction for a job. So I might say, hey, this person's looking for a job and has experience in this and you're looking for someone to do this job. Maybe you two should meet. Mm. But I, I, I did, I have had a lot and a lot and a lot of people ask me to recommend them for jobs, especially for jobs at Microsoft because I work there mm. and they'll tell me, you know, a recommendation coming from you would be a huge deal. And I'm like, yes, because I only get recommendations if I've actually worked with you and I have not. Right. And so yeah. sometimes they're like, Oh, well, we worked at the same company. I'm like, yeah, but we weren't on the same team. Like I was in one meeting with you ever. And it's like, they seemed mediocre in that meeting where they only said one sentence. That sentence was great. Like you don't want me to be a reference for you because my reference will be that I've heard of you or like she's funny <laughs> on Twitter right. or like she's got great hair or whatever. Right. And right. Um, I've had people say like, can you recommend me? And it's like, 
it's not that I would have anything bad to say about you. It's that I don't have anything really to say. And to me, that's not positive. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not a positive reference. It, you know, one, negative one, zero, you're kind of at the zero line. You know, there's nothing moving you, you yeah. know, up or down. So, yeah, I completely yeah, we, understand. We have this thing. Um, I don't mean to, like, talk about my employer a lot, but this is a cool thing. So uh, I used to work at the Canadian government, and the way we did our um, our yearly review was, like, your direct manager did all your judgments, and that was it. So, like, let's say... Um, so like usually me and my manager would be like high-fiving and be awesome. Right. And it's fine. But what if like you have a manager and like you don't get along or like they're, you know what I mean? So what they do at Microsoft is we have this thing called perspectives. Uh, so what I did is I just like, you know, like I did, you know, a threat model with this guy on my team who was really cool. And I was like, yo, can we do a perspective? And they say, you know, like what was good, uh, and, and like ideas for you to improve or like you do this thing, this is cool, but you know, it would be even cooler. Um, you do this thing. I don't like it that much. Like, or have you considered this instead? Um, you know, here's why I value working with you, et cetera. Right. And I have gotten really, 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 really productive criticisms. Like, um, like the best one I'll share with you. So everyone, everyone should know this. I, I suck at this. I will get really excited. I'll write like 10 blog posts on a plane. So I'll fly back from Israel. It's 12 hours. It's daylight. I can't sleep. I'll write like a ton of blog posts. And then I'll release like all of them on the same day because I'm dumb. (laughs) That is is dumb. Don't do that. Release one a week. Don't release like five. Like, so I've already released three since my long flight back from Israel. Hmm. And I know they're already like, oh, we told you to stop doing that. But I did it on different days at least. (laughs) Right, And so I'm trying so hard to save some blog posts for next week and the week after. I just get so excited. I'm like, I want everyone to know now. And so she's like, did you know that you can time that? Did you know that's a thing? So I, on purpose, like I released one and then I timed one to come out today instead. So there was a few days in between. Yep. Right. And that's thanks to this woman on my team that was like, yo, like you're great at making content. You suck at timing. You suck. <laughs> You're really excited. You like 500 of the same thing. Wow. She said it's so much nicer. She's very constructive about it. But now I do that and I'm like better at this because of her. Right. Right. So the, yeah. the, I understand the perspectives used to be anonymous, but now they've made it so that you can see who's actually giving you the feedback. Yeah. I think it would be really obvious who gave me like all the different feedback. It's like when we worked on X together, I'm like, yeah, I know right. who that was. Yep. Yeah. But uh, if it's anonymous, I think that there might be more likelihood that it wouldn't be as helpful because sometimes people are less constructive than than dist- and more destructive because, you know, they can snipe at you, at, you know, and they think they're so clever. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, stop complaining that blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yep. that's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, um, I, I, I like the idea of, of being able to give people feedback in that, in that manner. So, um, yeah. So, um, oh, wow. And your boss sees it. Right. And I like that my boss gets to see it. It does suck though. Cause I, I have only had around 40% of people actually respond. Hmm. So I'm like, does that mean that those people have a thing that they want to say to me that's bad, but they feel like not able to say it. And if it's like, Tanya, you smell bad and you're a stinky monkey. I mean, like, I don't need to hear that. Right. But if it's like, you know, I don't feel you make enough time for blah or do you know what I mean? Like, right. I want to be better, not perfect, but like we all kind of are on a journey to yep. improvement. Do you know what I mean? Yep. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so off topic. No, that's cool. Um, no, I, I like that because it's all about, you know, this is all about feedback and giving feedback and everybody, you know, in yeah. your perspective system is, is mentoring one another in, in, in some respects. So it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And like finding a professional mentor that will actually give you feedback. And so importantly for mentees, listening to the feedback, but then making your own decision. Um, so I, I know not, all mentors will have um, great feedback. 
uh, or productive feedback, especially if they're uh, like my first mentor who told me to never bother applying to a conference because no one would ever be interested in a unique thought I would have. Yeah. He sounds lovely. Yeah, I know. Like the breakup was really mean. Yeah. <laughs> so lovely. how did you take that? I mean, did you cry in a corner for a week or? Yeah, definitely. Or did you act? You did. I'd be crying yeah. in a corner. Yeah. And I also was like, dude, can we talk about this? Like, what is going on? Like, uh, like, can we work this out? And it was just like, F off, F off, F off, F off. Lose my number. Leave me alone. You're a stalker. You're annoying. And I was like, but we were like best buds for like three years. Yeah. I don't understand. Um, and so then, then I talked to my new professional mentor and he's like, well, if, if that hadn't happened with him, would you still apply to his conference? Cause he runs the conference in my city. Like he runs everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was like, yeah, of course I would. He's like, then still apply. So I applied the first year I got rejected. Um, and then I applied the second year and I was rejected. And then this past year I was invited to speak because oh. I am now too famous not to invite. Nice. And that was extremely satisfying. <laughs> oh yeah. Revenge <laughs> and, is yeah, the best. And then I was like, well, I kind of don't want to go cause it's uncomfortable. And then my professional mentor said, dude, don't let someone, don't spite yourself and ruin your career and do stupid moves Help. because of a personal thing that happened between you and someone that's too dumb to see your value. So now he's seeing your value. Don't do it to spite him. Don't not do it to spite him. What would you do if he wasn't involved? I'm like, of course I would speak down the street from my house with hundreds of people coming. Of course I would go. Right. I go for like 10 people at a meetup. I am like addicted to public speaking at this point. That's <laughs> like, nice. Like, I, if the Starbucks people were like, "Would you give us a talk about security?" I would be like, "I'll be there. I'll have a latte." Like, nice. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So he's like, well, "Oh, dum dum." Like, there's no decision to make here. So I went. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're at the top of the hour. Um, I want to talk about Wosak just uh, fa fairly quickly. You've mentioned them several times here during the during the show. Um, you uh, Wosak tweets is the name of the Twitter handle, I assume. Yes. Okay. Cool. Wo Wosak stands for Women of Security. Okay. Uh, we. We. <laughs> I'll let you ask. Yeah, you have uh, 15 chapters worldwide. What's the goal of Wosak? So since I sent you that. Now we have 19. Oh, look at that. Yeah. We turned one year old last month. Nice. And we are in Africa. We are in Europe. We're in North America. It's so exciting. We have people like writing us from all over the world. Okay. So WOSEC, basically, uh, so I've worked in IT forever for over 20 years. And everywhere I go, it's a bunch of men. And I love men. But I also really like women. And for instance, in my blockchain course, it's all men. And you know, when I speak at the Python meetup, it's all men. Everywhere I go, it's all men. And it's cool having female friends. It's nice when someone's like, oh, you changed your hair. I'm like, yeah, I did, thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> and just men, men are wonderful. There's so much, like, I love men. Um, but I also just want to have female companionship. So I, I was so I went to Israel and um, I met all these really cool women that run a thing called Cyber Ladies there. And then um, and then I totally misunderstood a lot of it. Uh, it turns out. Um, but anyway, like we had this dinner and there's just a whole bunch of cool women that all worked in cyber and I'm still like friends with them. And we've kept in touch. It's been over a year and that's awesome. And we just had so much in common. It was so cool. And then there are women. So then we could do women stuff. Like, like I, like, I don't mean to sound like all we do is talk about hair, but like, like no offense. Like I just wouldn't ask you about like, do you think I should like cut my bangs shorter? Like that's just not a thing that I would ask a guy. Do you know what I mean? And it, like, I'm sure like you like having guy time and guy friends. So and so I came back and I was like, yo, Donna, my friend Donna. So I had two female friends in security, Donna and Nancy. And I was like, hey, what if we had a brunch once a month? And then we like started a meetup and maybe other women will come. She's like, yeah, hopefully Nancy comes and maybe Katie will come. Because we just assumed we knew all the women. Right. Right. So we now have 
Over 200 women in our meetup. Jesus. The first meetup, 22 <laughs> nice. women came. Nice. So we call, we call it like brunch and bitch. And then since then, we've formed informal mentoring relationships. Two of the women started a company together. Um, we So we also started crashing what we call boy meetups. But really, like the Python meetup is not for men. It's just that only men ever show up. Mm -hmm. So I would go by myself and it was intimidating. So we went to capture the flag and we made our own team and then we went to B sides. And so we knew that there'd be like 25 other women there and we all already knew each other. So then it was like really fun and exciting and like, Oh, do you want to sit with me for this talk? And so female attendance went, goes way up if WOSEC crashes your conference. So we crashed awesome. Microsoft build, we crashed RSA at RSA, we had a woman breastfeeding during our meetup. Oh, that's very nice. I don't know if you've ever been to a tech meetup and seen a woman breastfeeding, but I haven't nope. before. So it's like we make like this safe space where women can meet each other and hang out. And then we go to events together. So it's not intimidating. And then we have workshops. Um, the chapter in uh, Kenya, in Nairobi, it's so popular that she's having workshops sometimes twice a month. Nice. Because there's so much demand. Um, and lots and lots of men have been wonderfully supportive, like so supportive. So we have a graphic designer who does all this stuff for us. And he's like, I love what you're doing. And I just want to help. We have, you know, men like making sure we have spaces for our meetups. We have men come and teach at the meetups. And, and it's funny because uh, some, uh, some people have like argued with me, like you don't need to have this. Like there's all these other women's, groups, why do you have to have this? Like, well, so a lot of women's groups charge money, low sex free. You know, we all go have brunch and we all pay for our own brunch, right? Like it's just a bunch of friends going, they all know us now. It's funny. They give, in Ottawa, they give us our own room because we're so loud. We're always giggling and laughing. Nice. Um, I like brunch. But, but, but the idea is, is that if you actually have a whole bunch of friends, maybe you'd be more likely to stay in InfoSec and not leave. Absolutely. Or you have... You have like a team of people to support you, right? So uh, one of the women, we helped her find her first job. One of the other women, she she did her first public speaking talk and we knew and we all showed up. But then she booked another one and she didn't tell us. And then we all surprised her and showed up and we're like, yay, Rama! Nice. And, and also we've been able to stand up for each other um, at one of, so there's chapters all over the world now. And um and we're doing a bunch of things right now. We're trying to plan an online conference so that any woman in the world can go for free. Um, but like one of, one of the chapters, uh, a woman came to me and explained that um, an incident of sexual violence had happened at her mm. school. And then I used my fame uh, and I called the school and I was like, what the fuck? Sorry for the language. Um, and I was like, are you aware that this happened? And like that the Dean of your school did this and that women are afraid to go into school today because of that. And are you, and they, they freaked out. They had no idea. They started an investigation and in under four hours, the Dean was fired from the, from the university. Oh, that's good. Like they investigated, found out it was true and did it. And like, she was in tears. She's like, Oh my God, I thought I was going to have to drop out of school. I was so scared to go back. And like, this is a thing that like, she trusted me because of her mentor in her chapter. And then we could work together and band together. And like, how many other people did we protect? Right? Like, right. and this is, so if, if we can like, use our power together, we, we can do things like, like RSA was so wonderful. They're like, yeah, we'll give you a room. We'll do this. We'll do that. Like, how else can we help? They're like, we want to do whatever we can so that women want to come to RSA and are comfortable and happy about it. So okay. you just tell us what to do. Can you come back next year? Like right after they're like next year, next year. Nice. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> do, do you so, guys have a Seattle WOSEC uh, chapter? We... Um, we are just finding a leader. I think we have a volunteer. And so what we do is like, we set them up with like a more, um, uh, like someone with more experience to help them start their chapter to make sure they're a success. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we are looking for sponsors because I sort of just um, keep twisting my boss's arm further and further, and they're paying all the meetup fees for the whole world. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you know. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you. Um, but we should have like more than one sponsor. Like that's a smart idea. Um because like I've kind of just been like running it really rag ragtag with all these amazing women. Like, just people come out of nowhere. Like, we just started a South African chapter in uh, Johannesburg, and they're thinking of starting one in Cape Town. And um, yeah, so if you know someone in Seattle who would want to help, that would be great because two women is way better than one woman. Okay, and it's kind of not hierarchical like some other. It's just like. Like in our meetup, for instance, Donna and I run it. But if someone else is like, hey, I want to do this. I'm like, cool. I'll make the meetup and you lead it. Like one of the women's like, I'm going to capture the flag. I'm like, oh, I can't go because I'm like speaking. I was like running a track at that conference. So I had to like run the track yeah. and get all the speakers going and stuff. But she, so she's like, can I lead a meetup? I'm like, yeah, yes. Oh, my gosh. Right. So the idea is, I guess, just making friends. and Okay. Yeah. Well, I do know a couple of ladies uh, that come to our CSEC East meetup, our monthly meetup. Uh, you know, we invite everybody who shows up. There actually is one tomorrow night, so I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping uh, they they show up. But uh, you know, if if Wosec in Seattle wants to crash the InfoSec camp out, they can definitely oh, yeah. do that. We have some that'd uh, be super fun. We still have some camping slots. We also have some uh, conference tickets. So if they want to, you know, help out with that or you know, join us, they can. So uh, yes, yes. Yeah. And you should introduce me to those nice ladies. I, I can do that. Uh, uh, they're all on our Slack, which we will be talking about here in a second. So, cool. um, all right. So one, can I ahead. say one more thing about Wozniak? Yes, please. Um, so our Twitter account is sort of weird and special. Uh, like a lot of people's Twitter accounts talk about themselves. Um, but our Twitter account, what we're hoping to do with it is have it be a constant positive stream of women in security being awesome. So uh, all of us just use it to retweet cool stuff that other women are doing, even if like they're not part of WOSAC. Mm -hmm. So rather than just, um, so I mean, I do retweet my stuff sometimes, right? But, mm -hmm. but what we do is like, I just search my Twitter feed and then whatever I think is awesome, I just share it over there. And so we just want to be this positive, constant stream because Sometimes people are like, oh, there's no women in security. I'm like, no, there's tons. We follow 4,000 of them. Yep. And they're amazing. Check it out. This woman just did this. This woman just got a new job. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I have. I I follow uh, pro roughly 500, I think, women I, 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 uh, and, and, and people of various genders, uh, not just not yeah. just women. But um, yeah, I, I did a like a super thread a couple of months ago where I, I, I got everybody that I knew had a picture that looked you know, non-white male, uh, and, and mm -hmm. add them. Some of them didn't have pictures, so I couldn't really tell. So I probably overlooked some, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of folks, there's a lot of folks on, on Twitter, a lot of ladies in InfoSec and in, uh, not just GRC, not, you know, uh, regulatory and compliance stuff, but yeah, definitely, uh, straight up hacking, Mauer, Unicorn, uh, you, Ms. Wendy, um, uh, Knox Everett, who's, um, um, I work with, she's a fantastic uh, lawyer and lady. Uh, yeah. So, um, Amazing. Amanda Berlin. Miss Berlin. <laughs> yes, we're going. We're definitely going to cover Miss Berlin stuff uh, here here in a few minutes. So, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of ladies in infosec. A lot of ladies should get out and, and come to conferences and yes. uh, you know, yes, get involved. And if it makes them more comfortable to do it in a group, then I am there to be their wing woman. Right on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. It's more fun. Just selfishly, it's just more fun for me. Right. <laughs> That's right. It's more fun with a f with with a friend, you know. So for sure. Yep. For so sure. Uh, you have a you mentioned your blog is is your is your blog on Twitter? I have two blogs. So I have a blog on Dev that uh -huh. new community for developers. Okay. Because those are my people, and then I have one on Medium as well. Okay. But I publish mostly the same stuff. It's just that Medium has more because I had it longer. It's the same thing. Just look up She okay. Hacks Purple. I have a YouTube channel too. It's just youtube.com slash She Hacks Purple. Okay. And I'm theoretically going to make a website. I just started my own mailing list. It's called She Hacks Purple. Um, do you see a tone? <laughs> yes. Yes. You're not red team. You're not blue team. You're the purple team. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't make up my mind. They're just both so good. That's okay. 
there there's a lot to be said for both uh, working uh, at the same time. So I, I appreciate that. So um, and, and she hacks purple is your uh, Twitter on uh, Twitter handle. Uh, you're you've already mentioned where you're going to be speaking. We usually do that stuff at the end. I accidentally asked the question oh. at the beginning. Uh, you, you're going to be um, uh talking at uh, DevSecOps here in Seattle, which is sad because you're going to be here not this week, but next week. DevSecCon. So, or DevSecCon. No, it's not. It's, it's not next week. It's oh. in September. Oh, September. DevSecCon. Yeah. Okay. It's not uh, DevSecOps days. Oh. There's, like, there's a bunch now where their names are all really similar. Um, this is... I, I don't know. It's just run by these two really nice people, Francois and Lisa. Okay. All <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, keep uh, keep keep an eye on her uh, Twitter handle. She acts purple, and she'll she'll probably tell you where she's going to be or when when she's when when she's going to be there. So I uh, will. Cool. All right. Um, so yeah, Ms. Berlin uh, is uh, our our third wheel and then the person that you know keeps the keeps the band together and she does a lot of work uh, she's doing some workshops and she's doing uh some training and she does the hackers health uh, the hackers mental health uh, villages at conferences which is really great i I've, i volunteered and helped out at the the last one at DerbyCon. and uh, you can find uh all of the hackers mental health stuff on twitter at um hackers health uh, oh God! So let me make sure I got that right. I don't know why I don't write this stuff down. Hackers, We're, you're still learning. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm new at this job, so you know, hacker. You do need a mentor. Yeah, I need a mentor. <laughs> I I've actually reached out to somebody just recently. Hackers Health. Hackers. There's a Hacker Health. That's not it. Hackers Health. Multiple mm-hmm. hackers. Uh, group of hacker. Murder of hackers. I don't know what they call a group of hackers. Um. So yeah, Hackers Health, and you can find her also on uh, Twitter at Info Sister I N F O S Y S T I R. I think she's going to be at Layer Eight. Oh no, this is going to rec- this is going to go out like two and a half weeks later. So she was at Layer Eight. Uh, <laughs> hope you got to see her there. Um, and she's going to be at DerbyCon uh, and uh, ShowMeCon, I think, as well in the in the coming weeks. So if if this comes out before ShowMeCon, then you'll either see her there or she was already there. And sorry you missed her. So it's. Oh, this, this time stuff, Tip, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So, um, Mr. Betcher, you do LogMD and uh, you have some things going on as well. Why don't you tell us uh, what LogMD is, real quick, how to get a hold of you? Oh, LogMD is a uh, Windows logging malicious discovery tool mm-hmm. that I developed uh, along with one Michael Goff. And uh, yeah, so check that out. It's free. Uh, speaking of free tools, free DevOps tool um, to help you log all the things and uh, get some value out of that. Awesome. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Betterpwned. B o e t t c h e r p w n e d. Awesome. Okay. So the um, why don't you tell us about the Slack because I'm um, I'll be talking a lot after this. Will you? <laughs> wow. Um, oh. The Brightsec oh. Slack channel. Oh. Um. Where do I begin? It's it's got a lot of um, different channels, right? Yeah, yeah. No, if you're interested in a particular topic, you can pick a channel like Sim, like um, mental health, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and all the things like that. Yep. And then we have what we call a um, hallway con. Right. Where basically everybody goes in and uh, talks on whatever topic they want to, but keeping it real. Right. Yep. 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 We also have a book club. Um, uh, our moderators, uh, Dave Cybuck and uh, JB, uh, who worked, uh, you know, is uh, one of our newer uh, moderators, runs book club for the U.S. folks in the uh, EU and APAC uh, uh, on Saturday mornings, uh, Pacific time. So uh, the the next books we're going to be doing for the summer reading program is Cult of the Dead Cow in June, uh, The Tribe of Hackers book in July, uh, The Mastermind in August, and Cuckoo's Egg in September. So if you're interested in joining our book club, which is online and we use Zoom and everybody gets on and talks about the book uh you know you can join our slack uh by sending us a dm at breaksec which is our official uh podcast twitter handle uh, at breaksec b-r-a-k-e-s-e-c or or you can email the uh podcast at bds.podcast at gmail.com 
Uh, we're also doing our CTF club. PonySec is uh, trying to find a time that is stable for everybody. I told him and suggested 8.30 in the evenings on Saturdays, so he's going to go ahead and try that again. Uh, he has speakers. He has demos. He's got people coming in and shelling and rooting all the things and making that happen. It's open to anybody and everybody who wants to join. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's he's uh, trying to resurrect that and make that happen. Ultimately, I'd like to see us have like a BreakSec CTF team that would go out and do various CTFs after everybody's been kind of spun up on on various things. But uh, that's kind of down the road, and I'm not directly involved with the CTF club thing, so I'm kind of letting PonySeg do his own thing on that. So um, we- I actually <clears throat> just go onto the Slack channel to talk to Amanda. Oh, yeah? Well, she is a yeah. joy. I love her. Yes, she's awesome when, uh, when she's on Slack and in rare form, when she's in uh, rare form, so... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, Brian Brake, B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E. Uh, we're on iTunes. Like I said in previous shows, uh, iTunes reviews actually are helping you get better visibility uh, for, uh, like, the hot, you know, what's hot or not on, on the podcast and stuff on iTunes. So if uh, you are getting you know, legitimate value from the podcast. You can always send us a review if, uh, or you can, you know, leave us something in our Patreon. We got a lot of patrons who are helping us out with, uh, time and effort hosting, uh, you know, the show takes money. Um, paying for the zooms every month costs money as well. So those, uh, those help, uh, those tips help us offset the costs, which is great. Uh, cause we don't have sponsors yet. Um, it, I wouldn't lie. I say it is something we're investigating. I just don't know if it's too CD yet. So we're, we're, we're looking at that. So, um, Google play store, tune in radio, iHeartRadio. radio. There's pretty much no place you can't find the podcast. So there you go. um, yeah, so uh, InfoSec Campout still going on. We got tickets. We got camping spots. Somebody just asked me if they could pull their 32-foot RV up into one of the RV spots, and I said, yes, uh, but you're going to need at least two people in that RV because one person in a 32-foot RV, uh, or what is that in metric? That's like uh, 10 meters, 10-meter 10 RV. Uh, that's that's not uh, – that's – that's that's uh, taking advantage of the RV spaces. So a minimum of two people on the RVs. But uh, go to infosetcampout.com and you can uh, get a ticket to the conference. We've got uh, three or four speakers. Uh, I think we filled almost all of our slots. We're just looking for maybe one or two more people to do that. We're going to have marshmallows, campfires, s'mores. Uh, we're looking at scavenger hunts. Uh, you can fly your drones. Uh, you know, we're going to be having a lot of fun there. So it's August 23rd. Uh, you can camp the night of the 23rd, the conference is on the 24th and, uh, you can camp for two nights if you like, and I'm going to be out there both nights. So, um, definitely uh, check that out at infosetcampout.com if you can. So, all right, well, uh, we've, uh, definitely gone over time, which is great because I thought this was all great information to talk about. Tanya, thank you for coming on. Um, and, uh, you're always welcome back. We've got some other topics we'd like to discuss with you. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely, uh, hit you up to, to have you come on back at a later time to uh, discuss those. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Right on. Okay. Well, that was it uh, from uh, the world headquarters here in Seattle. This has been Breaking Down Security. Uh, Everyone have a great week. Be nice to yourselves. Be nice to one another. Take care of yourselves because you're the only you you have. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye.